Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video this morning. I hope you're having a terrific Tuesday thus far. And so we will be taking a look at what is going on across the Atlantic. Of course, there are those two disturbances that we are watching and uh, what is currently happening for the Caribbean and surrounding areas. And we'll also be going over into the Eastern Pacific where there is a lot of activity right now. And before I go into details, please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the bell so that you never miss an important video. Alright, so we're starting out with the Eastern Pacific. Just going to spend a couple of minutes here. And uh, here we can see that there are multiple systems. And Greg is kind of falling off this map here. And that is because it's actually over in the Central Pacific. It has entered the Central Pacific Basin. But we'll be looking at it very shortly. There we have Hurricane Fernanda, which is a weakening cyclone and two disturbances that one highlighted in red, given a high 90% chance to develop over the next seven days. So maybe by the next two days, possibly sooner. Uh, a tropical depression even a tropical storm could develop and the next name to be used for the eastern pacific season is hillary so it looks as though this is future hillary and if you're along the pacific coast of mexico you might want to keep an eye on this to see what happens with it over the next couple of days because if it is close enough in proximity it could bring a lot of heavy rainfall which can in turn lead to flooded and so i will keep you guys posted on it and uh, here is the satellite imagery of the basin right now there we have fernanda uh greg out there let's go on to those two cyclones so as we take a look at fernanda here we can see that it is down to a category two hurricane maximum sustained winds of 110 miles per hour and it should continue to weaken over the next couple of days and uh, by the end of this week it should become post tropical and maybe whatever is left of it is going to be making its way very close to the hawaiian islands so i will keep track of it for you guys there and uh going on to greg now here you can see that greg is still a tropical storm not expected to become a hurricane and uh it is going to be passing well to the south of the hawaiian islands so no direct impacts in hawaii are expected and the system should gradually weaken as we approach the end of the week now going on over into the atlantic and on the inferred satellites here you can see that there is quite a bit of action out there there you have that big tropical wave that robust one coming off of africa and uh, we could see some development of it over the next couple of days we'll be going on to that very shortly further to the west is that next cluster of activity in association with uh our low pressure area that we're watching for development going closer to the caribbean near trinidad there is that little blob right there are some showers and thunderstorms so that could enhance the rainfall in the area maybe bring in some heavy downpours at times and then over in the western caribbean there is lots of showers and thunderstorms lots of moisture over there favoring all of that activity so let us go ahead and zoom into some areas so uh looking into the vicinity of northern south america also going into most of the caribbean let's start with jamaica there is some activity to the north of jamaica not a whole lot happening for the island this morning going to hispaniola puerto rico the virgin island similar story but we do see all that cloud cover across most of the leeward islands across parts of anguilla all the way southward to uh guadalupe thereabouts and some activity is coming in for other areas such as Martinique. There was some thunderstorm activity nearby earlier. So uh, there might be some passing showers as we head throughout today. Going down into St. Lucia, southward to Grenada, we're not seeing much similar surf for Barbados. But as we look into Trinidad and Tobago, there we have all that activity. Lots of showers and thunderstorms nearby. As I said, that could trigger some periods of heavy rainfall and thus could cause flash flooding across some areas so be aware of that as you're going out today and don't forget your umbrellas guys and uh, as we look to northern south america though not a whole lot happening some dissipation activity across uh, suriname similar story as we head over into some spots in venezuela but as you look uh, into the southwest caribbean going to colombia panama there is a lot of shower and thunderstorm activity going on this morning uh, for the abc islands a bit of activity nearby but nothing much uh, for the three islands there as we head further west a lot of action over in the western caribbean so for the cayman islands especially grand cayman and over to some spots in central america mexico going to belize even off the coast of honduras nicaragua there we see all that thunderstorm activity so overall a lot of rainfall likely across most of central america as we head through today let's go on to the rainfall map so as it becomes more colorful that is indicative of more 
more rainfall than expected within the area. Those periods of very heavy downpours. So I'll just come around here. So starting out with the northern Bahamas, Florida, the Keys, going to parts of western Cuba, there could be some substantial rainfall as we progress through today. And of course, we're going to Cayman as we saw. There is currently a lot going on in the area. And then, as I said, for most of Central America, there is going to be uh, a lot of rainfall activity, even some heavy downpours at times. So that continuous heavy rainfall or even a lot of rainfall in a very short amount of time can trigger flooding across some of those more flood prone areas as we head toward uh, northern South America, Colombia, Venezuela, the Guianas, some rainfall activity expected as well. And as I said earlier, for Trinidad, Tobago, there's that little blob moving through, so that could enhance the rainfall. And then go into the vicinity of the ABC as maybe a chance of some showers here and there, hopefully, because it has been pretty hot and dry. But as we head uh, further up into the rest of the Leeward, uh, the Lesser Antilles, rather, there isn't a whole lot uh, that is expected as we head through today. Similar story across the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico. There could be some activity popping up. Head into Hispaniola, Jamaica. There might be some isolated showers and thunderstorms, especially as we head to this afternoon. But for the Southern Bahamas, Turson Caicos Islands, it should be a pretty sunny day throughout majority of today you know going back to these areas that are marked here so here we have this one which is expected to continue generally toward the west and that next tropical wave just as I showed you guys before moving off of Africa that big one so fortunately that's one it could bring some heavy rainfall to the Cabo Verde Islands as it continues uh, to the west and starts to move on that west northwestward trajectory or that northwestward trajectory so that's what's going to be happening with it. So then that next one to the southwest of the Cabo Verde the Islands, actually the formation chance decreased for it from 20 to 10%. So if there's going to be any development of this, it will happen very very slowly. It's not in a highly conducive environment. The wind shear up ahead of it is a bit intense and uh, there is also some dry air. So those will help to uh, prevent this from becoming anything too significant over the course of the next couple of days. So uh, when it approaches the Caribbean though, if it has a lot of activity in association with it, then it could be a problem. Regardless of being a tropical depression or tropical storm, once it has a lot of activity in association with it, it could be a problem in terms of that heavy rainfall which triggers flooding so that is a potential hazard should the system manage to sustain itself out there but of course I'm here to keep you guys posted on it and uh, as for the second disturbance by the way 30% chance to develop so uh, the formation chance will continue to gradually increase if conditions ahead of it seem favorable and if it is actually taking advantage of those conditions to try to get itself together as you look at the dry air map we are seeing that there is also a lot of dry air even extending into the Caribbean so this is kind of helping to stabilize weather conditions across some areas but a lot of dry air in the mid levels of the atmosphere and where we see more of those shades of reds oranges those are denser areas of dry air and uh, things should get more conducive we should start to see less of this which will in turn favor more development of these tropical waves moving off of Africa and as a matter of fact as we take a look at some models here going on to the Canadian model this is as we head to Monday of next week the model is expecting that we could see something in the Gulf and it is also showing that system enter in the Caribbean maybe as a tropical depression or tropical storm and I'm a bit doubtful about the system actually reaching tropical storm status but uh, the Canadian model has been somewhat consistent about all this activity now if we should go out further uh, and head to the 23rd of the month looking across the main development region here we can see two more systems expected out there by the Canadian model so Canadian expecting a lot of development for possible cyclones out there uh, between now and the middle of next week. Do I think that is possible? Slightly. Maybe one or two systems at the most, but I'm not really so hot on four of them out there. Let's go on to Icon. And as we head to the end of the latest model run, here we can see that it is expecting that there will be quite a bit of systems out there. Three systems to watch for. So this is as we're going to be heading into Sunday, the 20th of the month, a couple days out from now. Heading on to GFS. Now, GFS is showing that we might see something try to get itself together in the Gulf around this time, Tuesday the 22nd, and lots of moisture increase across the Caribbean with the tropical wave moving in. And 
and then as we head to Thursday of next week, what I have noticed about GFS, it has been inconsistent, but it has been consistently showing that we could see something coming from the Caribbean, uh, maybe developing in the Gulf, become a hurricane. We see a pressure of 987 millibars as we head to Saturday of next week. So pretty interesting here what GFS is showing something Ian-like, if you will, a track similar to that of Ian. But the model has been changing a lot and nothing is really solid right now. We're still talking about something more than a week from now, so there are bound to be a lot more changes with these runs. Going on to Euro, you're also sniffing at something in the Gulf as we head to Tuesday of next week, that uh, system approach in the Caribbean. And then that next one out there, not managing to hold itself together up to this point, so maybe some of that dry air infiltration. So it's an interesting week up ahead, guys. There are a lot of possibilities on the table, but I'm here to keep you posted at all times so that you're never caught off guard. And that is pretty much it for this update. I hope you found it to be quite informative. But if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll respond once I get the chance to. And as always, remember to be with wise.